वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू कैसे हैं सब लोग सो द टूडे टॉपिक इज प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड ए लॉट ऑफ चांस ऑफ मिस्टेक इन प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई चैप्टर वेदर यू टॉक अबाउट एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू और यू टॉक अबाउट प्रैक्टिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस चैप्टर place of the supply chapter decide whether transaction is leviable to cgst and sgst or whether transaction is leviable to igst before starting the class let me ask one question to all of you assume that supplier is located in delhi registered customer is recipient is located in maharashtra registered in gst place of the supply let's say it comes to delhi when this party supplier raise the tax invoice to the recipient on maharashtra gst number you tell me which tax will be charged will it be cgst and sgst or it will be igst which tax would be charged by the supplier on the tax invoice raised to the registered recipient of maharashtra having the place of the supply as delhi The answer would be CGST and SGST. Answer would be CGST and SGST. Now you surprised that how it can be possible. Now I can say that the participant who has given the answer as IGST, they have looked two location. one location and second location but if you go to the definition of interstate supply or intrastate supply it says that the location of the supplier and the place of supply if both are in same state then it is intra state supply and cgst plus sgst is being charged now in this example if you see that location of supplier is delhi and place of the supply is delhi according to section 8 of igst it to become intra state supply and therefore c plus s would be charged not i when you have the place of the supply according to the respective provision of the gst not according not according to your logical mind might be your logical mind says that uh, the goods are being delivered at this location so the place of the supply would be this location might be you are saying that uh, the service has been rendered at uh, maharashtra so the place of the supply would be maharashtra not necessary you have to apply the place of the supply provision now listen carefully the once you have the place of the supply in your hand then location of recipient would be 
irrelevant when you have the place of the supply in your hand then recipient ka location would be irrelevant to determine whether my transaction is inter or intra to determine which tax would be charged whether it will be c plus s or i in my question that location of supplier was delhi place of the supply was delhi so therefore it become intra and c plus s would be charged i hope it is clear so this is the starting point of the chapter make the table please make the table to determine the place of the supply to determine the place of the supply we will read four section section 10 section 11 section 12 section 13 of igst act what is the difference or distinction between 10 11 12 13 the first distinction between that this 10 and 11 would be used to determine pos in case of the goods 12 or 13 would be used in case of the services now when 10 would be used or 11 would be used when 12 would be used or 13 would be used if it is domestic supply of goods or goods section 11 will be when it is export of goods or import of the goods in 10 and 11 what is the difference in section 10 the domestic supply in section 11 it is import of the goods and export of the goods in case of the services either section 12 would be used or 13 would be used what is the difference in short i am using the word los means location of supplier and the location of recipient both are from india L O S or L O R. Any one is outside India. Any one is outside India. It means one part is in india one part is outside india it can be the supplier in india then recipient outside india or vice versa supplier is out of india and then recipient is in india any one party is outside india then we will apply the section 13 to determine the place of the supply we will use multiple example multiple discussion but only point that differentiation i am not using the word that in case of the domestic service you will apply 13 and in case of the export or import of service you will apply 13 or 12 i am not saying that in case of the domestic service you will use 12 in case of the export or import of service you will use 13 no i am not saying because you cannot decide whether it is a domestic transaction or export import without the help of place of supply you cannot decide that transaction is export or import without the place of the supply and as a result 
we are deciding the place of the supply and after the place of the supply we can say the transaction is export or import therefore always remember that in section 11 you are using when it is export or import of the goods but in section 13 you are not able to decide export or import of service without place of the supply and we are determining the place of the supply therefore section 13 says therefore section 13 says that location of the supplier and location of recipient any one is outside india so differentiation is clear we are going to discuss we are starting with the section 10 what is the section 10 section 10 will be used for goods and that is domestic supply it means i am making the supply within india section 10 has 10 subsection 1 has five clause clause a clause b clause c clause d and clause e it has five clauses normal sale of goods clause b is bill to ship to model what is the bill to ship to model we will discuss in detail clause c is place of the supply of the goods when it does not involve the movement of the goods place of the supply when no movement is there Clause D is talking about in case of the installation of plant and machinery, etc. Clause E, when goods are supplied on board a conveyance. So, there is a train and in the train, the goods has been supplied. So, these are the five clauses we will try to complete first and then we will move to the subsequent section. Very good evening to all of you. In case of the reverse charge mechanism, place of recipient is it relevant? Huh. Because nee, nee. you are saying which tax will be paid by the recipient and the RCM. For that, you are asking, is it relevant that location of recipient is important or not? Prima facie, location of recipient is only helping to decide POS. Once the POS is in your place, once you have the POS is in your hand, you will check the location of supplier and check the place of the supply. After the POS, there is no role of LOR. There is no role of LOR. Very good evening. Uh, to all the participants. Now we are moving to the section 10. Shall I change? Now. Section 10. Basically, it is being used to determine the place of the supply for goods in India. It has the following five rules. We are reading the clause A. When the supply does not involve the movement of the goods it is covered in the clause c and in the clause a involve the movement of the goods where the supply involve the movement of the goods movement whether by the supplier or by the recipient or by any other person the place of the supply of such goods shall be the location of the goods at the time at which the moment 
टर्मिनेट फॉर डिलीवरी टू द रिसीविंग What is the place of supply? The place of the supply shall be the location at the time at which movement terminate for delivery to the recipient. This word is creating the confusion in two cases. We'll discuss. But normal first normal example, if A is registered in Maharashtra, is making the supply to Mr. B who is located in Delhi. B has given the order to A to deliver the goods to my location. In that case, A is delivering the goods to Maharashtra. It means the location Maharashtra will be the place of the supply because. Location of the goods at the time at which movement terminate for delivery to the recipient. Now the confusion. What is the confusion? What will happen in case of the over the counter? let's say i was traveling to maharashtra and i went to the shopping mall and purchased certain goods let's say i visited big up bazaar i visited shop a stop and i purchased certain goods for me the supplier has given the goods at the counter now i am taking the goods to my delhi location what would be the place of the supply the problem is bigger in case of the b to c transaction because in case of the b to b the supplier knows the customer gst number supplier quoting the gst number of the customer and probably if the value is more than 50000 there would be the corresponding eva bill in that case he knows where the delivery terminate ultimate location of customer but the problem is bigger in case of the b2c he does not know that whether goods will be further moved or not then in all such cases to avoid any such problem the supplies made by the maharashtra they are treating that on the counter itself they have given the delivery and the counter ka location will be place of the supply which is not correct practically which is not correct why not correct because gst is the destination based taxation system if i am taking the goods further from mumbai to delhi read the language movement can be caused either by the supplier so maharashtra party can deliver the goods to my location or movement can be caused by the recipient so over the counter is nothing but the movement is further movement is being done by the recipient or by any other person like i have sent some transporter or you are sending the goods through any courier company if the supply involve the movement the movement can be by the supplier or by the recipient or by any other person what would be the place of the supply the place of the supply will be the location where the delivery terminate so prima facie it appear in all such case it should be recipient location but now the b to c was creating the problem for which there is an amendment which you will discuss in the amendment class there is a new subsection inserted which you will discuss in the amendment i am not talking about the amendment right now because the classes which i am conducting in the october but i am taking the updation till april probably there would be the lot of amendment which will be applicable so that all the changes would be taken in the statutory update part
second same problem was in case of x factory i was saying two problem one is over the counter sale and second problem is x factory sale same problem because supplier saying that the delivery terminate at my counter or at my factory so i will charge c plus s is it clear any question you may ask once i'm 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 going to discuss that bill to shift to model separately now second clause let me read first where the moment clause c says that clause a was saying when there is a movement of the goods but clause b says in case of the bill to ship to model what is the bill to ship to model what is the bill to ship to model you are billing to one party but you are delivering to another party see what happened in the bill to ship to model in the bill to ship to model the delivery of the goods is at some different location let me take the example supplier a is in new delhi recipient is new delhi okay and there is a third party which is located in b haryana or you can understand this particular example in another way another way so there are three party a b and c a is billing the goods i am sharing my particular white board a b and c so assume first there are two party a and b a from delhi and b from haryana a has raised the tax invoice on b and also he has delivered the goods at b location so basic principle sub section 1 clause a says that the location where the goods delivery terminate to the recipient so that location would be haryana he will charge which tax kaun sa tax charge karega when he is raising the tax invoice to b which tax he will charge i can say according to 101a the place of the supply is place of the supply is haryana the location at which the delivery terminate to the recipient in that case the place of the supply would be haryana right therefore the location of supplier is delhi location of recipient is haryana place of the supply is haryana what is my basic funda that once you have the place of the supply in your hand please delete the location of recipient in same state no therefore igst will be charged which tax will be charged igst very simple now let's say a is from delhi b is from haryana 
Now B has received the order from C to deliver certain goods. B in turn has given the order to A for providing this goods. Now A knows B and B knows C. So A kya karega? A will raise that tax invoice to A, B. B will raise that tax invoice to C. A will raise the tax invoice to B. B will raise the tax invoice to C. But as per the instruction of Mr. B, as per the instruction of Mr. B, this A who is ultimate supplier and C who is ultimate recipient and as B is nothing but the third party. But the goods are delivered directly by A to C location. What is that? It is built to ship to model. Built to ship to model means this supplier is billing to one party, but he is making the delivery shipping at another location. If this is the case, it is called as built to ship to model. Then subsection 1 clause B says that when A raise the invoice to one location but is making the delivery at another location in that case, what is the place of the supply? The place of the supply is the principal place of business of third party. Can you please see and tell me? What is the place of the supply? What is the principal place of the business of person who is giving the instruction? So, I can say the person who is giving the instruction is Mr. B. The person who is giving the instruction is Mr. B. Therefore, the principal place of the business of third party become the place of the supply according to 10.1b. What is the 10.1b? Let's open the relevant provision and then discuss the place of the supply. According to 10 subsection 1 clause B, it simply says, where the goods are delivered by the supplier to the recipient or any other person on the direction of third person. In my example, third person was B, supplier was A and the recipient was C. When A is delivering to C as per the instruction of B, it says that the place of the supply shall be deemed that such third person who has received the goods, it shall be deemed that such third person has received the goods because why the word deeming is being added because it is not happening actually. In my example, please tell me who is actually receiving the goods. In my example, who is actually receiving the goods answer would be C. But as per the this clause B, the they are saying it will be deemed that third party has received the goods and the principal place of the business of Mr. B will be the place of the supply. So therefore, the place of the supply will be B ka location when A is raising the tax invoice to B, even though goods are not delivered to B because it will be deemed that such third person has received the goods. Obviously, B in turn will raise the tax invoice to C. B is located in B is located in 
Maharashtra. He will also raise one tax invoice. Obviously, yes. Now, please tell me. Now, please tell me what is the place of supply. When B is raising the tax invoice to C, what is the place of the supply and which tax he will charge? The answer is according to the 10th subsection 1 clause A, where the delivery terminates. So, in this case, Mr. C has actually received the goods. So, the delivery is being terminated at this location. So, the place of the supply becomes Delhi and therefore, it will be IGST. Is it clear to all? Build to shift to model me. Place of the supply kya hoga and how it will be determined. Is it clear to all? Just confirm. No problem, uh, Anga. Mr. Miss Anga K. Thank you uh, for joining. But uh, now please be there till 10 o'clock. So be active till 10 o'clock. We will understand. We will learn a lot of things. The place of the supply is very, very important chapter because it needs conceptual clarity. Now let's move further. 10.1c says that place of the supply when place of the supply if supply does not involve the movement of the goods if supply does not involve the movement of the goods then 101c says that place of the supply shall be the location of that goods if the goods may movement any if there is no movement then the location at which goods are there at the time when delivery is finalized, then that will be the place of the supply. You tell me what is the suitable example for this clause. What could be the suitable example for the clause C? Can you please tell me there is a sale of the goods, but by virtue of this sale, there is no movement. Can you please tell me what could be the appropriate example? Can you tell me what could be the appropriate example For the clause C means example means where supply does not involve the movement of the goods. What could be the example when you are selling, but as a sale, there is no movement. How it could be? I'm asking the example. So you have the question with respect to composition and registration. Uh, so we can discuss at the end only, not in between, because if I will go now to the registration, there will be the confusion to all the participants. Okay. We are going to discuss. Definitely, there is no de denial to the fact. Oh, oh, now I have received the answer. Sir, I have sold the flat. I have sold the house. Sale of land and building. Okay. Now you tell me, can the sale of immovable property, can it be the example of the clause C? Sale of immovable property, let's say I have purchased this office, I have purchased the flat, I have sold the land. Could this be the, could this be the example for the clause C? My current discussion is only with respect to immovable property. 
क्या इमूवेबल प्रॉपर्टी का सेल क्लॉज सी में आ सकता है जस्ट आई एम आस्किंग से ये सोनो lot of answer thank you so much for your active reply for your active participation this will help a lot you all will message to me that sir i become chartered accountant and i love to see that message whenever you are the exams i hope you all have connected in linkedin profile i have you all have connected with me in the linkedin profile only professional i am not doing any marketing because i like to see the message sir i have cleared my ca final and i got this much of the marks in idt chapter or in idt particular paper not chapter question is what was my question can sale of immovable property be the example for the clause c we are reading the place of the supply for goods we are reading the place of the supply for goods you remember what was the definition of the goods goods means every kind of movable property recall the definition section 2 class 52 what was the goods goods means every kind of the movable property can immovable property be the goods answer is no because only movable item is goods so if it is immovable it can't be goods also it cannot be the goods so if it is not the goods how it can come under section 10 to determine the place of the supply how it can come to determine the place of the supply by virtue of the section 10 because section 10 talks about the place of the supply for goods place of the supply for goods so one thing is sure that it cannot cover the sale of immovable property because immovable property max to max it can be the example for services under construction sale of the immovable property theek okay. hai giving the rent or lease immovable property that could be the example of services but that can never be the goods and therefore in section 10 sub section 1 clause c it cannot be the example now then what could be the example sir i have purchased this property this is an institute building because i am a teacher i have purchased this building it is not the sale of goods but along with the building i have purchased a furniture i have purchased a fixtures i have purchased a air condition fan lighting projector computers chairs tables etc these all are goods which is movable but these all are goods which is movable and that is being also sold to me in that case i can say there is a sale of goods but there is no movement because it is in the institute prior to sale and it is remain in the institute after the sale i am giving one more example one more example let's say mr a is the principal mr a is the principal and mr b is the job worker now a need certain job work service from b for which there is a special machine required b says to a sir i do not have the sufficient money to buy that machine so kindly provide you and charge some rental amount when a sending the machine to b for rental purpose let's say this transaction was in august 2022 please tell me sending of this machine to b it is a transaction of goods or service sending the machine to mr b on rent is it a transaction of goods or services
how the farm house can be the example of taxable goods can be the example of services after 6 month what happen now b is saying sir i like to buy that machine sir i like to buy that machine let's say i have decided that uh, the goods is being sold by a uh, let's say a is saying that you need to pay rupees 10 lakh to me now in the month of let's say january 2023 the sale is being decided whether a will raise that tax invoice to b yes or no for 10 lakh rupees whether a will raise that tax invoice to b for sale of that particular machine whether a will raise that tax invoice to b for sale of that machine kya a b ko tax invoice raise karega for rupees 10 lakh for this sale of the machine answer is yes he will answer is yes he will now this transaction is supply of the goods or supply of services this sale of that machine in rupees 10 lakh to mr b is a sale of goods or sale of supply of services ye kya transaction hai supply of goods ka hai ki supply of service ka hai this transaction is of the supply of the goods or supply of service answer is the answer is that this transaction is supply of goods now because of this sale in the month of january 23 is there any movement of plant and machinery answer is no there cannot be the movement of the goods it is already there where it should be so this could also be the perfect example for 101c i hope it is clear to all the place of the supply where goods does not involve the movement then what would be the place of the supply the location of the goods at the time of the delivery to the recipient any question kindly ask no 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 viraj it cannot be it cannot be so because i talked about na, that section 2 class 52 definition of the goods which talks about that it should be movable property because farm house cannot be the movable property it is immovable so it is not the goods therefore it is not coming in the 101c or it cannot come in 101c clear now let's move further if the goods are assembled or installed at site the pos shall be the place of the such installation or assembly the place of the supply will be the place of installation of that machine or assembly of that machine so in that case let's say uh, a has sold one machine to b but b is saying kindly installed at my factory so the factory ka location would be the place of supply very simple now when the goods are supplied on the board a conveyance including vessel aircraft train or motor vehicle the place of the supply shall be the location at which such goods are taken on board what is the meaning let's say one train is being starting from delhi and then it is going to up then it is going to mp and then it is going to let's say rajasthan or any let's say indore it's going to chatisgarh let's say it is going to chatisgarh by this route mr a is traveling and a has taken the train from delhi for going to the chatisgarh he has purchased the goods at madhya pradesh he is purchased the goods at madhya pradesh and is consumed the goods at chatisgarh any goods you can say 
that IRCTC is supplying certain goods to that passenger Mr. A. A has purchased the goods from Madhya Pradesh and is consumed in Chhattisgarh. Doubt is what could be the place of the supply for delivering that goods. Because goods are being taken in the train. Goods are being loaded in the train. This is a there's centralized warehouse in Kanpur, Noida, UP. Whenever the train is going through that route through Kanpur, then there is a centralized warehouse of that uh, Indian Railway. They are loading the goods in the train from Kanpur. So the sale of the goods by the IRCTC to the passenger, any passenger, whether he's sitting from Delhi or from UP, from MP, purchasing at MP, purchasing at UP, any location, irrespective of any location, the place of the supply is being fixed. What is the place of the supply at which the goods are taken on the board? So it means for entire journey, the Kanpur Uttar Pradesh would be the place of the supply for this entire train. Because the goods are being loaded in the train at Kanpur. So the place of the supply for entire journey. Place of the supply for entire journey is Kanpur. So this is very short discussion for the place of the supply for Goods, domestic supply, 10 subsection 2 that they are saying if place of the supply cannot be determined because of any reason, then it shall be determined according to the provision it may be set. And as of now, there is no such rules framed under 10 subsection 2. Any question, kindly tell me. If you have any question, please let me know. And no question. Uh, 10 a terminate the delivery. 10 b principal place of third party. 10 c location of the goods because you are giving the answer to location of the goods. 10 c perfect. 10-1-D, installation place, right? 10-1-E, huh, bahut badi ani good. Very nice. Example of 10-1-E, let's say I am traveling from Delhi to uh, Calcutta. And in between, in between, I have purchased certain, let's say, uh, playing card from train. Let's say I have purchased the kurkure, ka packet, cool drink ka packet, cool drink ka bottle. I have purchased certain packed food. I have purchased Let's say toys for my kid and that vendor, let's say it is registered. IRCTC is registered in the GST. That goods is being supplied by the IRCTC. He is making the supply to me. He is making the supply to me. Then when I purchase the toys for my kid, what could be the place of the supply? I have purchased the toys at Madhya Pradesh. I am going to Calcutta. I have started the journey at Delhi. What could be the place of the supply? They are saying, for the entire journey, place of the supply is location at which the goods have been taken on board.
थैंक यू विराज सर इस पॉइंट बी बिल जिसको देगा वो प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई होगा ना किस पॉइंट में कौन से सबसेक्शन में आर यू टॉकिंग बोट टेन वन सी टेन वन ई आर यू टॉकिंग बोट टेन वन ई Give me the answer, Prena. Give me the answer for which question you are, for which subsection clause you are asking the question. Mohammad, uh, example is clear, na? Ten one e ke liye example clear hai, right? And Anikhet, I really like the short summary of in which you have prepared the place of the supply for entire section ten. बिल टू शिफ्ट टू मॉडल ओके हाँ जिस पार्टी को बिल करेंगे उस वो ही प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई होगा राइट प्रेरणा द बिलिंग वुड बी द प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई नाउ इन केस ऑफ द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ द गुड्स और इंपोर्ट ऑफ द गुड्स व्हाट इज द प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई सेक्शन 11 इज वेरी सिंपल इट सेज दैट इफ यू आर इंपोर्टिंग द गुड्स देन Place of the supply will be the location of importer. If you are exporting the goods, place of the supply will be outside India. Very simple. Importer, can you tell me in case of the importer, what would be the location of supplier, India or outside India? In case of the import, let's say I am importing. Let's say you are importer. What would be the location of supplier? Is it India or outside India? in case of the import any person who is registered in the gst is importing the goods what would be the location of supplier what would be the location of recipient thank you anike dear थैंक यू इंपोर्टर के केस में इफ आई एम सेइंग दैट यू आर इंपोर्टिंग द गुड्स देन द लोकेशन ऑफ सप्लायर वुड बी इंडिया ओ माय गॉड इफ आई एम इंपोर्टिंग द गुड्स इट मींस आई एम परचेजिंग द गुड्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इंडिया इफ आई एम परचेजिंग द गुड्स आउट ऑफ आउटसाइड इंडिया देन ओनली इट इज इंपोर्ट इन माय हैंड ना भी मैं इंपोर्ट कर रहा हूं मतलब क्या हुआ कि मैं बाहर से माल खरीद रहा हूं सप्लायर का लोकेशन क्या होगा बाहर होगा ना मेरा लोकेशन क्या है इंडिया अगर मैं एक्सपोर्टर हूं तो सप्लायर का लोकेशन इंडिया होगा कस्टमर का लोकेशन क्या होगा आउटसाइड इंडिया ये बात तो क्लियर है ना भाई बच्चा लोग कंफर्म करो कि दिस इज क्लियर वेरी बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट एक एक कहावत है ना मुर्गी पहले की अंडा एक वो कहानी जो भी है एक बड़ा डिस्कशन चलता है ना मुर्गी पहले की अंडा राइट सेम डिस्कशन आई विल डू सेम डिस्कशन आई विल डू बट इन द डिफरेंट मैनर पहले एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स डिसाइड होगा या पहले प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई डिसाइड करना है सेकेंड पहले आपका एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विस डिसाइड होगा and then place of the supply decide hoga ya yeah, place of the supply pehle decide hoga then export of service decide hoga these two important thing i like to discuss with each one of you make sure that it is crystal clear to all make sure that it is crystal clear to all murgi pehle ki anda same kahani hai dost why i am saying so because what is the difference between section 11 and the difference between section 13 you can uh, add one more point in your mind to have the clarity section 10 we have discussed 
section 11 says when i will use section 11 if it is an export of the goods or import of goods it means it is export of the goods or import of the goods section 11 says that please use this provision to determine the pos to determine the pos in case of the export of the goods or import of the goods so tell me which one will be decided will it be decided place of the supply first and second export of the goods or first you decide whether transaction is export of the goods and then you will decide the place of supply ek bar answer karna mujhe please give me the answer which one will be decided first will it be decided pos first and then export of the goods or export will be decided first then pos will be decided Tell me, friend, whether first is place of the supply or whether Chee, chee, sorry, sorry, Prana. I thought I was going to get a little bit. Thank you. No problem. I will clear the confusion. What is section 11? One more time, please repeat. Please repeat when the section 11 would be used. Read the chapter, no problem. Read the main heading of the section 11 from the book, no problem. But tell me when I will apply the section 11. When I will apply the section 11 to determine the POS. When I will apply the section 11 to determine the POS. Import or export of the goods? Import or export of the goods? Now, it means that First, you have to decide import or export of the goods and then you will decide the place of the supply. Correct now. So, in this case, it becomes first and it becomes second. Okay, so section 11. If your transaction is import of the goods or export of the goods, then you will use section 11 for POS. Now, what is the section 13? You will first decide POS or you will first decide export or import of service. Now, in the export definition or import definition, there is one condition for when I will explain the export of service. It says that the place of the supply should be outside India. It 
when you can say the export whether service ka transaction transaction is export when you can say that transaction is export if you have the place of the supply in your hand if you have the place of the supply in your hand right till the time you can't say that my transaction is export but because first decide whether place of the supply is outside india if yes it is outside india then it will be the export of the service subject to the other condition there are total five condition similarly in case of the import similarly in case of the import there are total three conditions out of that one condition is place of the supply should be india so can you decide import first before place of the supply can you decide export without place of supply can you decide export or import without place of the supply सर्विस के केस में नहीं कर सकते क्यों क्योंकि सर्विस एक्सपोर्ट और सर्विस की एक कंडीशन है पीओएस शुड बी आउटसाइड इंडिया इंपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विस की एक कंडीशन है कि द प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई शुड बी इंडिया करेक्ट सो देयर फॉर आई एम सेइंग सेक्शन थर्टीन वेदर प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई फर्स्ट और एक्सपोर्ट और इंपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विस इज फर्स्ट now tell me please that export of service or import of service is first or place of the supply is first which will come first and which will come second correct so aniket abhi clear hua nahi bilkul concept clear ho gaya right all the participant please confirm that there is clarity so what is the one more difference that in case of in case of the goods ka transaction first i have to decide export or import of the goods and then i can decide pos as per section 11 but if it is service transaction then place of the supply has to be determined first and then you can decide it is export or import of service is that clear ye wala part clear is that clear ek bar confirm karna is that clear as a reason last point i like to explain as a reason section 11 is saying as a reason section 11 is saying place of the supply in case of export or import of goods as a reason section 13 cannot say that the place of the supply for export or import of service it cannot say and therefore they are saying if los and lor any one any one is outside india then section 13 would be used to determine the pos once the pos will come and if it is outside india then my transaction is export subject to the satisfaction of all other condition so i hope they, this is clear to all so what is the place of the supply in case the import what is the i'm talking again going back to the section 11 
location of importer and what is the place of the supply in case of the export location outside India. What is the definition of export of the goods or import of the goods? Simple physical movement. If I am sending the goods from India to outside India, it is export. If I am sending the goods from India to outside India, it is export. It is immaterial to whom you are raising the bill. It is immaterial that whether parties belongs to India or outside India, customer belongs to India or outside India, immaterial. Matlab hi nahi hai. I have to see only one condition that physical movement is from India to out of India, it is export. From out of India to India, it is import. That's it. Foreign currency ka realization is not mandatory for treating the transaction as export. It is mandatory for taking the refund. It is mandatory for taking the refund, but I am saying whether it will be treated, treated as export of the goods if you are receiving the amount in the Indian rupees, answer is yes. Why sir, for receiving the amount in the foreign currency is the condition of services, it is not condition of goods and therefore amount is currency may realization ho hai, it is irrelevant for goods and therefore only if the goods are being moved from India to out of India, it is export and it is from outside to India, it is import. That's it. Very simple. Now we are moving to the section 12. It is location of supplier and location of recipient both are in India. Let me check the clarity. I am creating the confusion. By asking this question, please give the answer correctly. I can, I can say that majority of the participant will give the wrong answer. Fine. Let's say Arun is from India. Arun is from Delhi. Arun is going from Delhi to London. Okay. He has purchased the ticket from Indico, uh, Gurgaon, Haryana. Arun has purchased the ticket from Indico, Haryana. For going from Delhi to London, perfectly okay. When he is returning from London to Delhi, he has taken the ticket from Indico. The Nature of the transaction or nature of the service is passenger transportation service. Basically, what uh, what Indico is providing is providing the passenger transportation service by air. It is a service. Tell me, for the first transaction, I will use section 12 or section 13 to determine the POS. For second transaction, which section I will use to determine the place of the supply section 12 or section 13 kindly give me the answer be careful you may ask any question if you have but please give the correct answer
फर्स्ट ट्रांजेक्शन सेक्शन ट्वेल्व और सेक्शन थर्टीन सेकेंड ट्रांजेक्शन सेक्शन ट्वेल्व और सेक्शन थर्टीन प्लीज नोट आई एम गारंटिंग दैट ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट विल बी रॉन्ग either for first question or for second question or for both question there would be certain mistake so please treat this question as a challenge and then give the correct answer geeta everyone prerna aniket mufita everyone please treat this question as a challenge and give me the correct solution for both the case what is the difference between section 12 and 13 if the location of supplier and the location of recipient both are in india then section 12 section 12 if any one is outside india if any one is outside india then section 13 any one is outside india any one is from outside india any one is from outside india then section 13 location of supplier and location of recipient is outside india what is the location of supplier haryana what is the location of recipient delhi i am traveling from india, from delhi to london and coming from london to delhi but what is my location what is my location my location i am from india i am the resident of india so my location would always be india and therefore because both parties are from india therefore in question number 1 and question number 2 the place of the supply will be determined according to section 12 not according to 13 even though i am traveling i have taken the ticket from out of india to india not my physical location at the time of the transaction no the location of supply and the location of recipient let's read the definition now we are moving to read the definition of location of supplier and location of recipient what is the meaning of location of recipient where the supply is received at a place of business for which registration has been obtained so i am unregistered party i have not taken the registration if i am registered then my location or my place of the business where i have taken the service that would be the lor where the supply is received at a place other than place of the business for which registration has been obtained now i am receiving the service at a fixed establishment elsewhere so let's say i am registered in delhi but i am receiving the service let's say in rajasthan for that is a fixed establishment so i can say the place location of recipient would be the rajasthan where the fixed establishment is established there in my question it is not the fixed establishment question where the supply is received at more than one establishment then most directly concern i have to identify most directly concern how to determine the most directly concern it will based on the agreement based on the transaction fact of the case it will be decided which is the prime location for receiving the service and what is the last in the absence of such place suppose there is no place fixed establishment then location of usual place of the residence location of the usual place of the residence would be the place of will be the location of recipient so what is the location of recipient in my example my usual place of the residence is my usual place of the residence is delhi so therefore i would be of delhi 
and in the same pattern they have decided they have defined the location of supplier please note in the gst they have defined for services location of supplier location of recipient has been defined only for services only for services if it is a goods cut transaction it is not being defined if it is a goods location of supplier of the goods location of recipient of the goods has not been defined in the gst ek baar confirm karo whether question is clear or not whether question which i was is clear to all or not this question the right answer is section 12 and for the question number 2 even though my physical location is london by my usual place of the residence is delhi so the answer would be section 12 in both the cases question number 3 नहीं 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 वो इज रेजिंग सी वो इज द सप्लायर द पर्सन हु इज रेजिंग द टैक्स इन वॉइस टू मी हु इज द रिसिपियंट द पर्सन हु इज लाइबल टू पे दैट कंसिडरेशन लेट मी रिपीट वंस अगेन इन दिस ट्रांजेक्शन आई एम परचेजिंग द टिकट फ्रॉम इंडिको वेदर इट इज फॉर इंडिको हरियाणा वेन आई वॉज इन लंदन आई हैचेज ऑनलाइन नाउ ऑल्सो आई हैव परचेज ऑनलाइन ऑल्सो वेन आई एम गोइंग फ्रॉम इंडिया इंडिया टू लंदन और कमिंग फ्रॉम लंदन टू इंडिया आई एम परचेजिंग द टिकट indico haryana online in that case what would be the place what would be the location of supplier the person who is raising the tax invoice to me what is the location of recipient or what is the this who is the recipient i am the recipient because i am liable to pay the consideration i am liable to pay the consideration so geeta i was saying when i am traveling from india to out of india or i am traveling from out of india to india my usual place of the residence would be geeta tell me mera place of residence kya hai is it india or outside india my usual place of the residence is india or outside india my usual place of the residence is india or outside india i have purchased that ticket from indico haryana online i am from delhi so both parties supplier and the recipient is from india well whether i am purchasing the ticket from onward journey or whether i am purchasing the ticket for return journey i have purchased from indico haryana i am from delhi Indico is from Haryana. Both are from India. Section twelve would be used to determine the POS. Is it clear? is it clear okay now we are moving to the section 12 for determining the place of the supply for service transaction for domestic service na because both parties are in india no sir you can't say it is a domestic transaction you can't say it is a domestic transaction like in the recent example i am traveling from london to uk from london to india it is not the domestic transaction but i am using the section 12 so one thing is clear that in the section 12 might be the actual place where the service has been given might be the actual place where the service has been given is india or it may be outside india but when i will apply the section 12 
द सप्लायर का लोकेशन एंड रिसिपियंट का लोकेशन एल ओ आर एंड एल ओ एस शुड बी इंडिया देन वी विल यूज सेक्शन ट्वेल्व ठीक है एक काम करते हैं नाउ लेट्स टेक ए ब्रेक ऑफ फिफ्टीन मिनट लेट्स टेक ए ब्रेक ऑफ फिफ्टीन मिनट वी विल रिज्यूम एट सेवन थर्टी फाइव अशोक जी एक बार ब्रेक स्टार्ट कर दीजिए We will resume at seven thirty-five. Kindly start the break, Asok ji.
we are talking about section 12 so now we will uh, do the section 12 ka discussion only for the rest of the today class try to understand section 12 i am repeating once again in the section 12 the location of supplier and the location of recipient both should be in india the place where the services has been actually given it can be india or it can be outside india doesn't matter because selection of section 12 or section 13 depend upon the recipient and supplier ka location if both are in india we will apply the section 12 in the section 12 you are going to see that sometimes services have been taken in india sometimes services has been taken outside india but if the supplier and recipient is indian party we will always use section 12 to determine the pos now what is the section 12 now in the section 12 there is two part try to understand some concept before starting the section 12 your actual transaction if it is being covered in the specific provision then you will determine according to the respective subsection you will determine the place of supply determine the pos according to the respective subsection subsection 3 to subsection 14 is having the some list of the transaction what could be the place of the supply for immovable property it is being covered in one provision what would be the place of the supply in case of the banking company it is covered what would be the place of the supply when service is of transportation of goods or transportation of services it is being transportation of goods or transportation of passenger it is covered it means your actual transaction is being covered in subsection 3 to 14 then you will determine the place of the supply according to the specific provision but there might be the situation that your actual transaction is not getting covered in a specific one let's say we are talking about the consultancy services taken from a chartered accountant ca filed my itr tax audit is done for which he is raising the invoice how to determine the place of the supply you will see that there is no specific provision for consultancy services in that case you will determine according to the general rule or default provision the default provision is being covered in subsection 2 Default provision is being covered in the subsection two. So, what is the subsection two? Let me talk about twelve subsection two, which is the general rule. It says that if the transaction is B to B, it means service provider who is registered person is giving the service to the registered person, then. place of the supply would be lor it means the lor and pos would be the same in all cases no only in the general provision when the general provision will be applied when the general provision will be applied general provision given in the subsection 2 will be applied if the actual transaction is not covered in the specific transaction or specific provision sir where the specific provision has been given 
where the specific provision has been given answer is subsection 3 to subsection 14 please note place of the supply chapter we are going to discuss most of the section of igst act most of the section is of igst act so section 10, section 11, section 12, section 13, section, all the section are of IGST Act. We are reading the general provisions. In case, if I am providing the service to the registered person, then his location will become the place of the supply. If it is a B2C transaction, but his address is available in the record of supplier. address is available in the record of the supplier. In that case, my transaction is B2C and I have the address in my record. So, for example, Mr. B is coming to my office. He is saying that, sir, I need to file my GST return or income tax return. But I know that there is a process. He has to submit his Aadhaar card. He has to give the complete address. Then I will do the compliance. So, by which I can say, even though he is unregistered, but his address is available in my record. If this is the case, then location of recipient would again be the place of the supply. Same. In other cases, place of the supply would be the location of supplier. I am going to ask one important question, but first tell me, is this chart is clear to all? Please tell me, is this chart is clear to all? I am going, going to ask one important question, but before that, please confirm that chart is clear to all. Fine. What is my question? Please confirm whether my statement, I am putting one statement, I am giving you one statement, whether it is correct or incorrect, you have to tell me in the chat. In this case, in the last case, it can never be interested supply. It can never be IGST in the last case. I am saying if the transaction is being covered in this case, then I can say it will always be intrastate supply. It will always be intra. It can never be inter. Never IGST. It will always be C plus S. Whether this statement is correct or not correct. Whether this statement is correct or not correct. What is my statement? In the last case, it will always be intra state supply it will always be intra state supply and it will always be c plus s and never igst whether my statement is correct or not please answer whether my statement is correct or not please answer yeah लास्ट केस में मैं ये कह सकता हूं कि इस केस में अगर मेरा ट्रांजैक्शन फॉल कर गया तो हमेशा ये इंट्रास्टेट सप्लाई होगा ना कि इंटर ऑलवेज सी प्लस एस नेवर आईजीएसटी प्लीज कंफर्म इज इट करेक्ट और नॉट
प्लीज कंफर्म इज इट करेक्ट और नॉट The answer is yes. The it is statement is correct. It is correct because what is the definition of interstate supply? The supplier ka location and what is the definition of interstate supply, sir? What is the definition of interstate supply? When we say the supply is intra, if location of supplier and location of receipt, uh, sorry, place of supply. If location of supplier and the place of the supply both in same state. Now, what I'm saying, according to the default provisions, in any other case, the place of the supply would be the location of supplier. Now, it means if the supplier is in Delhi, the place of the supply would always be Delhi. So, it means if in any other case the transaction would always be within the state and therefore it is intra, therefore it is intra. Clear? Let's move to the first case. Section twelve. What is that? We have discussed that section twelve is for services when both parties, supplier and the recipient, both ka location is in India. Twelve subsection two it says that place of the supply of service except made to registered person shall be location of that person. So what I told you in case of the B two B it is L O R. If it is B two C but address available then again L O R. Made to any person other than registered, but the location of the recipient is exists in the record of the supplier. Address on record exists. Again, it will be L O R. In any other case, L O S. Correct. Now the first transaction we are discussing. Place of the supply of the service in case of the immovable property. Place of the supply of service. In relation to an immovable property or boat or vessel, it says that directly in relation to an immovable property, including service by architect, interior decorator, surveyor, engineer, or Any other related experts or state agent, any service provided by way of grant of the right to use immovable property or for carrying out construction or coordination uh, that work, the place of the supply of service would be the location of property. What is the service? Service is with respect to immovable property directly in relation to an immovable property, including architect, interior decorator, surveyor, engineer, or any other related experts or estate agent. 
any service provided by way of the grant to use the grant of right to use the property or carrying out coordination or construction work second clause they are saying lodging accommodation by the hotel in guest house homestay club or campus site by whatever name called and including the house or the boat or vessel including a house boat or any other vessel it means if it is movable also then also if movable boat or movable vessel is providing the hotel accommodation lodging accommodation what would be the place of the supply place of the supply would be de according de determined according to this provision then it says by way of accommodation in any immovable property for organizing any marriage or reception or matters related thereto official social cultural religious or business function including service provided in relation to the function at such property so by way of the lodging accommodation or accommodation in the immovable property for any marriage or reception related to the official social cultural etc then last clause say any service which is ancillary to the service referred to in the clause a clause b and the clause c okay what would be the place of the supply the place of the supply will be the location of the property or boat or vessel and if the location of the property is outside india if the location of the property is outside india it means mr a from delhi is staying in the hotel of london but that owner of that particular property of london is mr b from maharashtra mr b is the owner of that property let's say he also belongs to india that he is giving the service to mr a who is from delhi both the parties in india yes but this time the service actually being taken or service being actually performed outside india remember initial clause remember this clause remember this clause always in the section 12 might be the place where the service has been given it can be india or it can be outside india what is the example proviso 2 sub section 3 well sub section 3 which we are discussing if the actual property ka location is outside india let's say i am taking one more example let's say a is again belongs to delhi he is an interior decorator b is from maharashtra he has one property at london this time is taking the services last example he was providing the service in this example a who is an interior decorator b is saying to a that kindly provide the interior decoration service to the property located in london what is the location of the property london proviso says that if the property is in india then the place of the supply would be the property the location if the property is located outside india then what is the place of the supply lor please give me the answer in this case when a render the interior decoration service to london property which is owned by mr b of maharashtra what would be the place of the supply what would be the place of supply
the place of the supply become L O R become Maharashtra. Place of the supply because of this proviso become Maharashtra, not the property location. Now this explanation. It says when the property is located or intended to be located in more than one state or UT, then it shall be treated as made in each of the respective state. It shall be treated that it has been given or it has been provided in each of the respective state. And the value shall be determined as per the contract. So, when the property is located in more than one state, then first priority would be contract. If the contract is silent, then refer rule, IGST rule. We are talking I, certain valuation rules which has been prescribed, uh, certain place of the supply rule 3 to rule 9 has been prescribed. That if the property is being located in a more than one state, then how to be determined? First, according to the contract. If the contract is silent, then you will apportion. How I will apportion? Go to the value, go, go to the respective place of the supply rule. So that we will discuss in some time, but this is the provision. So by this 12.3 is completed. Any question? Any question? Now let's we read the rule respective rule rule 4. It says that when service provided by way of the lodging accommodation in the hotel in guest house and its ancillary services other than the case where the property is single located in two states. Number of the night stay in such property. Suppose I have taken one services from Taj Hotel. I am staying in the Mumbai for two days. I am staying in the Delhi for three days. I am staying in the Calcutta for four days. And for which Taj Mumbai is raising the single consolidated invoice. It says that the place of the supply would be apportioned according to the contract. I do not have any contract. Then the place of the supply will be apportioned based on the number of night stay in each property. So I can say 2 is to 3 is to 4 will be the ratio. Total 10 lakh will be is being charged. So I will apportion 10 lakh in this ratio. And each of the respective state would be the place of the supply. Now in all other services provided in relation to immovable property including accommodation, by way of accommodation in the immovable property for organizing the marriage reception or in case of the supply of the accommodation by the hotel in guest house etc is a single property so in the first example first case we have discussed property is not the single now we are talking about property single but it is located into or more contagious state then what would be the place of supply place of the supply would be the area of movable immovable property lying in each of the respective state or UT. Suppose I am staying in one hotel. That hotel is in border of uh, Delhi and Gurgaon. So it is having some area in Delhi and some area in Gurgaon. <coughs> it is single hotel but located in two or more contiguous state. In that case, I can say that I have taken the service in more than one state. So, how to apportion? Refer example number 18. Uh, so, you can refer the example, but it will be apportioned in the area of the property. 
थर्ड सर्विस बाई वे ऑफ द लॉजिंग अकोमोडेशन बाई ए हाउस बोट और वेसल एंड इट्स एंसिलरी सर्विस सो लेट से इट इज इमूवेबल नॉट इट इज अकोमोडेशन सर्विस provided by the vessel and vessel is movable then time spent by that recipient on the boat or vessel in each of the state or ut how it will be determined it will be determined based on the declaration given by the service provider he will say that boat was in this state for 2 days and in this state for 3 days declaration is sufficient no other actual checking is possible so they are saying in that case the declaration filed by that particular person supply would be the place of supply i hope it is clear now let's move to the subsection 3 is completed any doubt you may ask Let's move to the subsection four. Very simple. Immovable property in India place of the supplies of outside uh, India place of the supplies equal to L R. Absolutely. Okay. बिल्कुल ठीक है बेटा. बिल्कुल बढ़िया. Absolutely correct. Now. the subsection 4 says the place of the supply for restaurant catering personal grooming fitness beauty treatment health services cosmetic and plastic surgery in this case because all are performance related service restaurant catering personal grooming fitness beauty treatment health service cosmetic plastic surgery it is location where the service are actually performed it is not the lor it is not the los it is where the service has been actually given that will be the place of the supply so one person is going to let's say uh, taking the beauty treatment in the wellness center of let's say xyz limited then that center ka location would be the place of the supply now i know that there is a concept of urban club they are coming to home to provide any service now in that case the place let's say you have taken the beauty treatment at your location what would be the place of the supply l o r l o s no sir the location at which service are actually performed that means that is your location so that location where the service are being actually performed will be the place of supply Uh, please make some chart in your notebook please make some chart in your notebook 12 subsection 3 in short it is talking about the immovable property what is the place of the supply location of property in that also you can write if the property is outside india then the place of the supply would be the place of the supply would be lor 12 sub section 4 it is talking about certain performance based service like restaurant beauty treatment healthcare plastic cosmetic surgery what is the place of the supply place where the service are actually performed then training then performance so likewise please make the chart because when i will ask the question after half an hour you are able to give me the reply theek hai next is training and performance appraisal training and performance appraisal to whom now they are saying if it is registered person if it is unregistered person see in the 12th subsection 3 there is no bifurcation whether customer is registered or unregistered in the 12th subsection 4 there is no bifurcation whether customer is registered or not same place of the supply but in this 12th subsection 5 there is bifurcation what is that bifurcation if it is related to the given to the registered person l o r if it is given to unregistered person performance actual performance
if it is b to b then lor if it is b to c then actual performance suppose i c a i taking the physical training i am not talking about the let's say i am not talking about the uh, online training they are taking the physical training to the student who training is being conducted at let's say delhi what would be the place of the supply you are from up you are from kerala you are from kolkata west bengal you are from maharashtra you all are coming to take the training what would be the place of the supply it would be delhi the place of the supply would be delhi it means location where the event are being actually held or where the service are actually performed subsection 6 and subsection 7 uh, difference it is talking about the admission and it is talking about the organization it is talking about the admission to the event and it is talking about the organization of the event example let's say there is a match of ipl in eden garden on recently let's say the two day match the match is in chennai so i am going to chennai and taking the ticket from bcci or whomsoever is the uh, agency in that case the place of the supply on the sale of ticket for admission to the event what would be the place of the supply it will be determined according to this provision now let's say one company has hired one company has been hired by the bcci and he has given the contract for organizing entire matches of this particular world cup how the place of the supply will be calculated subsection 7 says the place of the supply for organization of the event difference clear and subsection 6 mein aur subsection 7 mein kya difference hai one is place of the supply for admission to the event so you are going to see the match you are buying the ticket then and second one has been hired for organizing the entire event because in the match there would be the multiple uh, transaction so arrangement of the sitting arrangement security arrangement lighting arrangement decoration food beverages facility to the medical facility multiple services would be there and this contract has been given to the xyz limited so when xyz limited raise the bill to the bccii he will use subsection 7 to determine the place of the supply but let's say bcci is raising the ticket for that particular uh, entry to the matches then bcci will use subsection 6 to determine the place of the supply for admission to the event the place of supply is the lo event actually held location of the event which event they are talking about cultural event artistic event sports event scientific event educational event entertainment event amusement park or any other place and service ancillary there to shall be the place where the event is actually held it means they are saying that location of the event would be the place of the supply the location where the event is being actually held or where the park or such other place is located that would be the place of supply in case of organizing the event xyz limited has been hired for organizing the event in chennai in calcutta in maharashtra in delhi for world cup matches and service recipient is bcci let's say it is registered in mumbai only organizer is organizing the event in multiple state but he is giving the service to the unregistered or registered it is being bifurcated if the recipient is registered always lor 
always L O R, whether it is in one state or whether it is in more than one state. So again, you if you apply your logical mind, might be your logical mind says that yeah, it should be a portion because one event is being held in the Chennai, one event is being held in the Calcutta, one event is being held in the Maharashtra, one event is in Delhi, one event is in Gurgaon. It has to be a portion. Answer is no. It will not a portion. If it is B to B transaction. Now, if it is B to C transaction, then shall be the place where the event is actually held. And if the event is held outside India, the place of the supply would be L O R. The explanation says where the event is held in more than one state and consolidated amount is charged, then you will apportion according to the agreement. And if agreement is silent, then you will apply on such basis as may be prescribed. So again, there would be the sum rule. Again, I let me summarize this particular provision once again. 12 subsection 7. It is organization of an event after that we will revise all these previous section once again so 12 2 se leke 12 7 tak hum log revise karenge we will revise after this completion of se section theek hai and then i will start if the time permit i will start the balance provision 8 9 whatever organization of an event which event it can be cultural it can be artistic it can be a sports event it can be scientific event it can be education event anything if it is b2b whether it is in one state or more than one state it will always be lor In case of the event is being organized and the bill is being raised to the unregistered party. So in case if it is a B2C, divide in three part. If it is a B2C, divide in three part. If event is held in one state only, then the location of event would be the place of supply. If event is held in more than two state or more than one state, if event is held in the multiple state, then place of the supply will be decided according to the respective rule, according to the IGST rule, which we will discuss. The place of the supply would be decided according to the IGST rules. So a portion, so see, one thing is clear, whenever we are talking about the event is being held in more than one state or the property is being held in more than one state then first would be first base would be the contract if the contract is silent then if the contract is silent then you will apply the respective igst rules like rule 4 we have discussed now we will discuss one rule for the event organization of the event and third is that if the event is held outside India, if the event is held outside India, then place of the supply would be LOR. The first question to all of you, whether we have discussed this provision, similar provision anywhere else, section 12, subsection 1 to subsection 7. Kya humne aisa provision kai aur bhi discuss kiya hai kya? If the event is held outside India, then LOR will be the place of supply. But the same concept have we discussed somewhere else also? Kya ye concept on the or bhi discussion kiya hai kya? That is my question. Ignore.
हैव वी डिस्कस्ड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट समवेयर एल्स आल्सो क्या हैव वी डिस्कस दिस कॉन्सेप्ट समवेयर एल्स आल्सो Yes, we have discussed this concept in subsection three. That is with respect to immovable property. That is with respect to immovable property. Wherein we have also discussed that first, if it, if the location, so normally it is the location of recipient. If the receipt, if the location of the property, sorry, the place of the supply would be the location of the property. If the property is held outside India, then we have discussed that L O R would be the place of supply. Architect service. I have given one example, but the entire subsection three is being covered. ठीक है. I hope you all are ready. Let's do the revision. Whatever we have discussed till now. Let's do the revision. Whatever we have discussed till now. Revision करना जरूरी है. ठीक है. So. it can be that uh, might be we have done the discussion of today might be we have done the discussion of today maybe mai abhi revision start karu and in the last 10 15 minute if time time permit i will take some more provision otherwise i will not take any provision no issue but let me revise the entire discussion which we had theek hai uh it's fine what is when section 10 would be applied to determine the place of supply when section 10 would be applied to determine the place of supply when section 10 would be applied to determine the place of supply when Section ten will be applied to determine the place of supply. When section ten will be applied to determine the place of supply. करेक्ट इफ इट इज ए डोमेस्टिक सप्लाई ऑफ द गुड्स विद इन इंडिया करेक्ट वॉट आर द टू लोकेशन वट आर द टू लोकेशन विच वॉट आर द टू लोकेशन विच वी आर यूजिंग टू डिटरमाइन द इंटर स्टेट सप्लाई और इंट्रा स्टेट सप्लाई टू डिसाइड माई सप्लाई इज इंटर और इंट्रा What are the two location which I have to see? If it is in same state, then it is intra. If it is in different state, then it is inter. Which two location would be looked into to decide my transaction? Is it inter or intra? Which two location we are using to determine inter or intra? Which two location we are using? We have to see to decide the inter-state supply. or 
इंट्रा स्टेट सप्लाई अभी भी मोस्ट ऑफ द पार्टिसिपेंट हैज नॉट गिवन द राइट आंसर द आंसर इज आई हैव टू सी द लोकेशन ऑफ सप्लायर एंड प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई वंस यू हैव द प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई देन एल ओ आर टू बी इग्नोर टू डिसाइड इंटर और इंट्रा so to decide intra state supply or inter state supply i will use location of supplier and place of the supply in other word i can say location of recipient would always be ignored please tell me the difference between section 12 and section 13 difference between section 12 and section 13 of determining the place of the supply difference between section 12 and section 13 to determine the place of the supply this is my third question what is the difference between section 12 and section 13 for determining the place of the supply of services section 12 is being used when both the location los and lor is in india and section 13 would be used when any one party is outside india can we say that section 13 would always be export of the service can we say that section 13 would always be export of service most of the participant has given the correct answer for the last question section 12 and section 13 thank you whether section 13 would result into always import or export of service whether section 13 would always result into import or export of the service क्या सेक्शन 13 का जो भी प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई का आंसर आएगा उसके कारण हमेशा आपका ट्रांजेक्शन एक्सपोर्ट और इंपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विस होगा आंसर इज नॉट नेसेसरी बिकॉज फॉर एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ द सर्विसेज देर आर फाइव कंडीशन फॉर इंपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विस देर आर थ्री कंडीशन एंड प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई इज वन ऑफ द कंडीशन माइट बी प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई कंडीशन इज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड might be some other conditions are not satisfied then in that case what happen the transaction would might be out of gst or would might be intra state supply so my just give ans my one brief answer that not necessary it will always export or import of service question 4 in case of the subsection section 12 subsection 2 which talks about the general principle when i will follow the general principle when i will follow the general principle when i will follow when i will use the general principle default rule when i will go to the default rule to determine the place of supply when i will go to default rule to decide the place of supply मैं कब ट्वेल्व टू को यूज करूंगा प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई डिटरमाइन करने के लिए
when i will use the subsection 2 default provision default rule to determine the place of the supply yes my God. thank you so much you are all correct when the provisions when the actual transaction is not being covered in subsection 3 to subsection 14 when the actual transaction is not covered in the specific one actual transaction is not covered in the specific one then not covered in the subsection 3 then you will determine the place of the supply tell me if the train is being started from jammu and kashmir it is going to kanyakumari goods are being boarded in madhya pradesh passenger started the journey in uttar pradesh and is going to let's say maharashtra i am not sure that whether that location will come in that route or not theek hai this is the transaction when this particular train is supplying the goods to this person in up is consuming the goods in maharashtra what is the place of the supply of this goods take this particular goods which has been supplied during the journey supply the goods on the conveyance what would be the place of supply what would be the place of supply what would be the place of supply all are correct place of the supply will be the place of boarding the goods in the train conveyance the place where the goods has been boarded in the train that would be the place of the supply what would be the place of the supply in case of the bill to ship to model what would be the place of the supply in case of the bill to ship to model बिल टू शिप टू मॉडल के केस में व्हाट वुड बी द प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई absolutely correct what would be the place of the supply in case the goods are uh, the uh, the bill to ship to model what would be the place of the supply the place of the supply would be the location of third party principal place of the business of third party because it will be deemed that he has received the goods if the service is re with respect to the immovable property if the service is with respect to the immovable property and that property is in more than one state it is in two or more than two state two or more than two state the service is with respect to immovable property and that property is in the two or more state what would be the first priority to proportionate what would be the first priority to apportion the value what i will use to apportion the value what would be the base to apportion this value when the property is in more than one state
फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी वुड बी दी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एंड देन आई विल गो टू द रूल नाउ अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूल आई एम आस्किंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूल आई एम आस्किंग according to the rule i am asking if the property is located in more than one state and there is a single property property is a single but it is located in more than one state now how i will apportion according to the rule how i will apportion how i will apportion based on the area i will apportion based on the area i will apportion very nice based on the area i will apportion if the property is located outside india then what would be the place of supply if the property is located outside india then what would be the place of the supply if the property is located outside india then what would be the place of supply service is with respect to the hotel accommodation marriage function architect interior decorator any service what would be the place of the supply if the property ka location is outside india then place of the supply would be lor can you tell me similar provision to this particular similar any other provision which is exactly similar to this provision which transaction are having the exact same provision which talks about if that thing is outside india then lor would be the place of the supply please tell me any other provision having the similar concept that place of the supply would be lor what is the place of supply having a similar provision answer is organization of an event organization of an event somewhere we have discussed somewhere we have discussed let me tell you 12 subsection 2 default rule we have discussed default provision we have discussed that in that situation it will always be intra state supply can you explain at some place in the default rule we have discussed that it will always be intra state supply and it will having the tax as cgst and sgst never igst it can never be igst can you please help me what was that provision
एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट बी टू सी अदर बी टू सी अदर प्लीज टेल मी इन द डिफॉल्ट रूल अगेन वन मोर क्वेश्चन इन द डिफॉल्ट रूल इफ द ट्रांजेक्शन इज बी टू बी और इफ द ट्रांजेक्शन इज बी टू सी हैविंग द एड्रेस ऑन द रिकॉर्ड वट इज द प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई इन बोथ केसेस प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई इन केस ऑफ द बी टू बी एंड बी टू सी इफ इट इज रजिस्टर इफ इट इज हैविंग द एड्रेस वेदर प्लेस वट वट इज द प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई इज इट वट इज द प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई फॉर फर्स्ट केस वट इज द प्लेस ऑफ द सप्लाई फॉर सेकेंड केस always l o r in both the cases always l o r in both the cases in case we are taking the admission in case we are taking the admission to the event now recipient is b to b and recipient is b to c please tell me what is the place of the supply in situation number 1 and in situation number 2 nature of the transaction is taking the admission to the event event could be organized uh, event could be that uh, cultural artistic sports event scientific event education event any event taking the admission to the event and if the recipient is b to b what is the place of supply and if it is the b to c address is available in the record address is available in the record what is the place of the supply address is available in the record what is the place of supply if the event is uh, if the transaction is taking the admission to the event what would be the place of the supply if supply if it is b to b recipient is b to b what would be the place of the supply if it is b to c so what is the place of the supply if it is b to b and what is the place of the supply if it is b to c what is the place of the supply if it is b to b and what is the place of the supply if it is b to c thank you so much thank you so much now you have differentiated that it is not relevant whether my customer is b to b or whether my customer is b to c whether address is available in the record or whether address is not available in the record in this case the place of the supply would be always equal to the event where the event is held where the event is held i hope it is clear now we have done the uh, this last question last question then we'll this do the discussion of some more uh, category two, two or three more category if the transaction is organization of an event if that very important question if the transaction is of organization of an event event is held in two or more state and my customer is b to b or customer is b to c 
what would be the place of the supply of organization of an event which is held in two or more states and recipient is b2b what could be the place of the supply and event is b2c what could be the, and if my recipient is b2c what could be the place of supply very important question Aniket, you need to add something more. It is not fully complete. Try and give the answer full. For first part, I am okay. For question number two, I am not okay. For question number one, I am perfectly okay. But question number two, I am not comfortable. Read 12 subsection 7 and then give me the answer. Very tricky question. Answer is if it is B2B, then LOR. And it is not important whether it is in one state or more than one state. If it is B2C, then it is event location. But because the event is being held in more than one state, then it will be apportion. Apportionment would be on the contract, otherwise, rule 5. Otherwise, rule 5. Oh my God, you have tried very good, all have tried very good. Thank you so much, great, all have done hard effort to give the reply, very nice. Now we are moving to the uh, uh, further uh, to the discussion, we have discussed that if like in this question, B2C more than one state, how it will be apportioned? Rule 5. What is the rule 5? In the absence of the contract between supplier and the recipient, the proportionate value of the service made in different state or UT is computed in accordance with rule 5 by 
generally accepted accounting principle it means we will apply the logical thing for apportionment they have given the example an event management company e has to organize some promotional event in state s1 and s2 for a recipient r please note they have used the word unregistered because if it is registered then obviously lor immaterial where the event is held in 2 3 4 5 state doesn't matter it will never be a portion the three events are to be organized in s1 and two event are to be organized in s2 what is the concept generally accepted accounting principle we will apportion in the ratio of 3 is to 2 total amount is being charged 10 lakh rupees so 10 lakh will be apportioned in 3 is to 2 so i can say 6 lakh for the s1 and 4 lakh for the s2 clear na now we are moving to the subsection 8 what is the subsection 8 subsection 8 says that place of the supply of the service by way of transportation of goods including by mail or courier please note we are reading the provision which exists in the april 2023 might be there could some changes in provision which you will discuss in the statutory update please do not have the confusion that the teacher has not explained the provision updated one no this is as per the books new syllabus and whatever the amendment are there all the amendment would be covered in the statutory update it is it will not be explained in bits and pieces i hope it's clear to all now place of the supply for the transportation of goods including by mail or courier it means if the goods has been transported of registered person then lor would be the place of the supply if it is unregistered person then picking location where the goods are handed over picking location starting location where the goods are handed over for the transportation that will be the place of the supply let's say mr a has delivered the goods to blue dart in delhi for making the delivery at maharashtra let's say mr a is from up tell me tell me if mr a was registered person what would be the place of the supply He has given the goods to Blue Dart at Delhi for making the delivery at Maharashtra. If registered, then what would be the place of the supply? If unregistered, then what would be the place of supply? अगर A registered होता तो क्या place of supply होता? अगर A unregistered होता तो क्या place of supply होता? Please give the answer. You have the provision in in front of you. गीता आपने इतना बढ़िया तो आंसर दिया लास्ट क्वेश्चन का व्हाई इट इज डिफिकल्ट व्हाई इट इज डिफिकल्ट वही कहावत है ना करत करत अभ्यास के जड़मती हो तो सुजान एक कहावत है ना करत करत अभ्यास के जड़मती हो तो सुजान रसरी आवत जात के सिल पर पड़त निशान सेम डू दी हार्ड लेबर यू विल डू एवरीथिंग यू कैन डू एवरीथिंग वॉट यू वॉन्ट ओनली रिक्वायरमेंट इज hard labor hard work that's it <laughs> so uh fine 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 who is supplier in this case next question is who is supplier in this case who is supplier in this case
all have given the correct answer let me talk about that particular answer if it is registered then location of recipient it means uttar pradesh if it is registered then up would be the place of the supply if it is unregistered then delhi would be the place of supply next question who is the supplier answer is blue dot what is the nature of the supply transportation of goods what is the nature of the supply transportation of goods now the place of the supply of transportation of passenger the place of the supply of transportation of passenger place of the supply of passenger transportation service what is that a registered person shall be the location of that person if again passenger transportation service again let's say mr a who is registered at up now he is taking the ticket from indico indico uh, is registered in haryana he is taking the ticket from delhi to bangalore situation number a what would be the place of the supply if mr a is registered situation number 2 what would be the place of the supply if it is unregistered same concept which we have discussed in the last case if he is registered then l o r it means if he is registered then what would be the place of the supply up if it is unregistered then where the passenger embark on the conveyance for a continuous journey where from where he has started the journey answer is delhi delhi would be the place of the supply proviso says when right to passes is given for the future use and the point of embarkation is not known at the time of issuance of that right then place of the supply shall be determined according to subsection 2 so you are not sure that from which location he will the journey would be started and it is not the current it is for the future in that case the place of the supply would be according to the subsection 2 which is location of recipient if address is available or if it is registered and third case b to c other the los hmm. it says that return journey shall be treated as a separate journey even if the right to passage for onward and return is issued being the same time so one journey from delhi to bangalore second journey from bangalore to delhi it will be treated two separate journey even though both the ticket has been issued at the same time even though both the ticket has been issued at the same time uh let allow me some time so that we can complete two more provision one more provision we can complete till here only the place of the supply on the board it conveys including the vessel aircraft train or motor shall be the location of the first scheduled point of the departure of that conveys shall be the location of the first scheduled point of the departure of that conveys what we have discussed in the goods what is the place of the supply of the goods which is being given during the conveys supply the goods on the board it conveys what was the place of supply supply of the goods on the board it conveys this is service what was the supply of the goods on the board a conveys what is the place of the supply in case goods has been given on the board board a conveys supply the goods on the board a conveys what is the place of supply the place of the supply is the place where the goods has been taken on the board where the goods has been taken on board jahan pe bhi goods humne load kiya hai goods boarded that would be the place of supply and what about the service service ke case mein place of supply kya hoga the place of the supply in case of service on the board a conveys then it will be the location of the first scheduled point of the departure of that conveyance so let's say the look, ja, train is being started from jammu and kashmir then next halt is delhi mr a has taken the 
uh, journey. Uh, he has taken the ticket at Delhi, has uh, boarded the train at Delhi, and now he is going to Kolkata. That is a question. Now suppose I am saying very interesting question. Let me let me draft the question properly and then ask from each one of you. One train is being started from Maharashtra to Rajasthan. It has multiple station. Let's say one station is West Bengal. One station is Chhattisgarh. One station is Haryana. One station is UP. Let's say. Mr. A, who has taken the train from West Bengal, he has taken the goods at Haryana, he has taken the services at Uttar Pradesh. If the goods and services are being loaded on the train, boarded on the conveyance at Chhattisgarh, what would be the place of supply for the following transaction? Train ticket purchased by A. If it is unregistered. Second, what would be the place of the supply for goods which has been purchased at Haryana? Third question. What would be the place of the supply of services which has been taken at Uttar Pradesh? Kindly give me the answer for all the three questions. And that is my last question, obviously. Question number one, question number two and question number three, please. Give the answer by putting the reference number 1, 2 and 3. What is the answer? Question number 1. If Mr. A is unregistered, what would be the place of supply for purchase of the ticket? What would be the place of the supply for purchase of the goods? What would be the place of the supply for taking, let's say, housekeeping services? Let's say he has taken the boot polish services or let's say he has taken the some certain cosmetic service, uh, cosmetic not cosmetic beauty treatment services let's say polish services any services iron services is being rendered by the train what would be the place of the supply of that service that goods that oh my god kya baat hai. nice yeah let me see i am also not remember that question what is the answer okay Question number two, uh, okay, and question number three, Supavya, Mr. Aniket Jain, Aniket, absolutely correct for all the three elements, really appreciate it. Please give the answer for all the three questions in one shot. One, what would be the place of the supply? Second, what would be the place of the supply? Third, what would be the place of supply? That's it. So you can write Maharashtra, West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Haryana, UP, Rajasthan, whatever. In one question itself. In one line itself, one chat itself. Kindly answer all the three questions in one chat. It would be easy for me to check and confirm. After completing this question, I will definitely give the briefing of 8, 9, 10 in short. Let me tell you the answer. I am waiting for another one minute. I am waiting for the answer from each one of you. Let's wait for another one minute.
three question i asked that the place of the supply of the train ticket you have already i have given one question also earlier so if it is unregistered then the place where he has boarded the train so that is west bengal goods where it has been taken on the board that is chatisgarh place of the supply na no, sorry what is the place of the supply for services recently we have discussed in case of the services what would be the place of the supply starting location departure of that conveyance so conveyance is being departed at maharashtra so the place of the supply would be maharashtra so what is the answer answer is west bengal question number 1 question number 2 chatisgarh and question number 3 is maharashtra thank you so much and last mai aapko summarize kar de raha hu subsection 8 we have discussed transportation of goods if it is registered then lor if it is unregistered then picking location starting location same is for subsection 9 that is passenger transportation services if it is registered lor if it is unregistered from where he has started the journey that is boarding location 10 when the services has been taken during the journey what would be the place of the supply A starting point of the departure of at conveyance so at subsection 10 we are concluding i hope you are enjoying the discussion if in case of any concern you can let me know and please connect with me on linkedin profile my linkedin profile is ca arun chajar that's it jo name appear ho raha hai i like to connect from each one of you that is only way we can connect and there is no element of marketing because i am not providing teaching at all anywhere other than icai platform theek hai so i like to connect because i could understand your every path of your career i would able to come to know that whom so ever has cleared the exams who are doing the job who are doing the practice what is the status so i would be very much happy because this is the i can say the only uh, part which by which i like to connect with all of you so so thank you very much good night to all of you we'll meet on the next class and complete the place of the supply chapter balance part thank you sir thank you so much good night to all of you uh sukh ji conclude kar sakte hain aaj ka